In this video, I'll demonstrate to you how to perform instant VM restore and migration on WinChin backup and recovery. I'll take VMware virtualization as an example. Let's first go to VM backup instant restore screen. From the restore point selection area, select the restore point of a VM which you want to restore. Then expand and select a target host to run the VM. When the host is selected, Vengine Bank of Recovery will try to verify the host configurations. It will take a few seconds. When done, please give the VM a name and you can choose to power on the VM after instant restore by turning the power on the VM after restoring option on. And also, you can choose to keep the MAC address of the VM and can choose a network to connect to. Please make sure the original VM is powered off. Otherwise, connect the instant restored VM to an isolated network to prevent IP and MAC address conflict. From the job name field, you can rename the job if needed. And once done, click on OK to submit the creation of the job. Once an instant restore job is created, you will be redirected to the job list screen. The newly created instant restore job will remain pending state before you manually start the job. Let's click on options and then start job to run the instant restore job. Let's click on the job name to check on the job details. As we can see, it only took half a minute to bring the VM back online. Now let's take a look at the ESXi server. Here in the virtual machine list, we can see a new virtual machine added by Instant Restore and it is up running. Let's open its console and take a look. Everything should be back online now. And from the data store list, we can see an NFS storage mounted by Vengine Backup and Recovery. That's where the file system of the instant restored virtual machine resides now. So next, we need to use the live migration feature of Vengine Backup Recovery to migrate the virtual machine back to the production storage. Let's go back to the job list. Here we need to select the target host where the virtual machine will be migrated to. Then configure the virtual machine name, storage, and network. And let's power on the VM after migrating. Next, select the transfer network or use Vinching Bank proxy if you had deployed one. And configure multi-threaded transmission. I'll use default three threads. Once done, click on OK to submit and the migration will begin. Here you can see the job type changed into migration. Let's click on the job name again to see more job details. Here's the instant restore virtual machine. And here's the migrated virtual machine name. And here are the running logs of the migration process. The migration will be performed in three steps in order to keep the data consistency of the migrated virtual machine. In step one, it will migrate the original backup data to the production storage. In step two, it will migrate the cache data during the runtime of the instant restored virtual machine. In step three, it will power off the instant restored virtual machine and then migrate some final cache data generated during the powering off process. When the three steps of migration are done, the migrated VM will be powered on. Let's check from the ESXi server. As we can see, the instant restored virtual machine is powered off, and the migrated virtual machine is up running. At this moment, we can go back and terminate the instant restore job. In the pop-up dialog, there are some important notices about the instant restore and migration features. Click on OK to confirm. 
The instant restored virtual machine and the NFS storage will be removed from the ESXi server. Let's take a look again on the ESXi server. The instant restored VM had been removed and also the NFS storage had been unmounted. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching.